I'm Steve Nord, I'm a local resident in the area. Steve, obviously we've come down today to look at these amazing stones. How long have they been at the, at the bottom end of your street? We've seen them here for you know, more than a decade, but no one's ever really known that much about them. And it was only recently, you were mentioned in a local <laughs> magazine and from everyone thought they spelled Green Gate more because you could only see part of the letters. Did you have any idea what they were when, when they were no, placed quite, out here? No, quite a lot of the stones were actually upside down so you actually couldn't see what they actually spelt so it wasn't until we've actually undercovered them with a machine they actually just actually say Green Gate Mills because they've been trying to, trying to source something that they thought was Green Gate Wharf. <laughs> We do come across lots of things, but not not, not as quite as big as that. Like they're uh, unusually the two to three ton in, in size as well, individually done, and and, and, uh, and still in quite good condition as well. And about ten years ago, we did some work around the corner where there were some problems, and we actually originally brought the stones from round the corner, like right. and brought them back. After some inquiries, we found uh, we found out that they did actually come from further downstream, going in towards Manchester City Centre. We mentioned about the stones that come from um, a local a local mill. Do we know whereabouts this this mill is? We don't know the exact location yet because we haven't found a map. I mean, that's that's the kind of thing. If any of you viewers out there have got a map that shows Green Gate Mills or even better, a photograph of it, that'd be fantastic yeah. to get that little bit of information so we can put it on, put it on a, a plaque with it. It'd be brilliant to give that little bit of history so people can, you know link you know space and time too many times we we discard history i mean that's been discarded in the past we demolished the mill and it was just dumped into the river whereas now is an opportunity where just through luck things have come together so we can put these letters back on the river bank because in this area there's nothing georgian left you know that's all there is i mean there's a few victorian elements but even that most has been demolished and yet this area would have been just a sea of industrial mills 150 years ago. There was, there was everything here, dye works, bleach works, rope works, iron works. You know, it's all gone now. And that's just that, just that little link back. The environmental agency are on site doing some work on a riverbank to landscape it, uh, ensure the flood defences yeah, for the city. And while they're on site, they've got these 16-tonne digger on site. So I asked them, would you be able to look at these stones and perhaps take them out of the river and see what it says and they've been very very helpful I can't praise them enough and they've just been been in a river with the digger as you see I've took the stones out and we've just spelt it out like the biggest and heaviest gravel set in history to me as a councillor for the area I find it quite significant that he was the first councillor for Trinity which this area was and I'm a councillor now and it just kind of, it's, it's nice to think that it links into that part of history that a councillor had a business uh, in the area and he actually gives something back because the most fundamental thing for me which I, I like is that he actually funded the first library free public library in the UK out of the money he made out of this mill now, You've done quite a lot of research on, on this Edward Riley Langworthy can you tell us a bit about him? Well, his family originally came from Somerset although he was born in London and he travelled around the world for quite a bit before he came back and set up in, business, in the cotton business with his brother at Greengate Mills and that's how we were able to find the link to, to the lettering. He created a lot of money from his business which he was able to put back into Salford so they set up the first museum and library which was the first free services of that kind in the country. That's the one at Peel Park? Is it? At Peel Park, yeah. And then later on, on, his, on his death, Langworthy Road was named after him and hence Langworthy Road. But also he left £10,000. I'm talking about it, that's in the 1850s, so you're talking two or three million pounds in today's sum. So while this was a thriving mill, that was helping finance education for the working classes, which is a great message. What's it actually going to look like yeah, when, when it's reset yeah. here on the, on the banks of the Irwell? Well, that's, that's <laughs> that for you to find out <laughs> next week, I guess. <laughs> you know, Come back and see it, let us know what you think. I'm sure the community will, will you know, have a full input. But we've moved very quickly on this, this is unusually quick, but I believe that if the opportunity is there you seize it quickly I don't want this to cost us a lot of money because it hasn't cost us anything and that's a good thing considering we've got because no money because the environment agency we're already working exactly and that's you know you've got to act quick on these things you have to get in there uh, like Flynn as some people say <laughs> and get it get it there get it in and um, not cost the, the, the taxpayer or the council anything because that's where we're at at the moment if we can get it for free we've got to grasp, grasp those opportunities and I'm just grateful that these guys at the uh, environmental agency I've been so helpful, but all works with friendship, you know, you say hello, make them a cup of tea, 
and work with people together and organisations, we get a lot more done.